Sauce here. This is a video lesson on improper integrals. Let's take a look at this integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x with respect to x. This appears to be a definite integral because it has bounds, but it goes from 1 to infinity, and infinity isn't a value. It can't be a stopping point for area under the curve because we can never reach infinity. Now, how do we deal with this? Well, let's first get a visualization of what this integral represents. The integrand is 1 over x, that's a parent hyperbola, and this function has a vertical asymptote at 0. But our asymptote is not worrying us with these bounds. We're starting an area under the curve at 1, and we're continuing forever. So this area ought to be able to be calculated. But how? If we apply the fundamental theorem of calculus, then we'll have to be putting the upper bound into the antiderivative. But it's not a value, so we can't do that. Here's how we deal with this type of improper integral. It's improper because it has infinity being used as a bound. So if infinity is the problematic piece, then we're going to replace it with a symbol, in this case a, and we're going to deal with that problematic piece with the limit statement, which is appropriate for dealing with infinity. So we have the same meaning. It's the integral from 1 to a as a goes to infinity. But because we have isolated the problematic piece with a limit, we're going to keep the limit throughout the rest of the work and then take the limit after we use the fundamental theorem of calculus. So continuing to show our work, we have the integral from 1 to a of 1 over x with respect to x. The fundamental theorem of calculus, I'm going to take the antiderivative of 1 over x, which is the natural log of x, and apply the bounds from 1 to a. But we also must remember that we're taking the limit as a goes to infinity. Showing the next step, the natural log of the upper bound a minus the natural log of the lower bound 1 with the limit statement still out front. Now, this natural log of 1 can be evaluated. But I have to think of the natural log of a as a goes to infinity. The natural log is a logarithmic function. And if we can visualize a logarithmic, a logarithmic function, logarithms are inverses of exponential. And as the domain goes to infinity, they do grow without bound. So the log function will go to infinity. The limit as a goes to infinity of the natural log of a is infinity. And it overwhelms the natural log of 1 to make the limit infinity. And when a limit is, is infinite in the application of a function, we could say the function diverges. So the area under the curve of a hyperbolic function from 1 to infinity is infinite. There's an infinite number of area even though the function is getting closer and closer to the horizontal axis. It won't get so close enough that the area um, becomes finite. It is an infinitely large space. Let's take a look at another function that is similar and problematic for the same reason. The integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared with respect to x. This is an improper integral because it has infinity as one of its bounds. This function is similar to the hyperbola, but the branch, branch is um, a more a sharper curve, it approaches the axes 
more quickly than the branches of a hyperbolic function. And the squaring undoes the negative and makes it positive, so the branches are in the first and second quadrant. There's symmetry over the vertical axis, um, but both branches are, have a positive area underneath them. We still don't, are not going to uh, be concerned with the vertical asymptote because the bounds of the integration here start at 1 again and go to infinity. And we might think, because of the previous problem, where we discovered that this area was infinite, that a function like this, with a very similar curve, is also going to have an infinite area. Let's see. We deal with the infinite bound by introducing a letter to stand for infinity, and then the limit as that goes to infinity. We have the integrand 1 over x squared with respect to x. Applying the fundamental theorem of calculus again, we need the antiderivative of 1 over x squared. We can think of this as applying the power rule for integration, thinking of 1 over x squared as x to the negative 2. And when we do, we get one, a negative 1 over x, which is the same thing as negative x to the negative 1, which is the power rule being used, from 1 to a. And, of course, we have the limit as a goes to infinity out front to, do in our, to take in our last step. Continuing, we get, applying the upper bound, negative, negative 1 over a minus a negative 1 over 1. And this we are still taking the limit as a goes to infinity, which we can do now. When you have a denominator going to infinity, we have a limit law that 1 of over a variable that is going to infinity goes to 0. So we have the taking the limit a negative 0 plus 1. And that, of course, is 1. So the result of calculating the area under the curve of this curve from 1 to infinity was simply an area or a shaded region that has a size of 1, which is, to me, astonishing because from a human perspective, these curves are very, very similar. But we've calculated the area under this curve from 1 to infinity to be infinitely large, and the similar curve to simply have an area of 1. Very different. I'm going to provide another example of an improper integral. We may be asked to integrate from 0 to 2 of 1 over x squared with respect to x. And this function 1 over x squared is the same that we've used here in this example. The bounds of integration do not contain infinity. But this is problematic because one of the bounds, though it's not infinity, is not a value that is in the domain of the function. There is a vertical asymptote, a discontinuity at zero. So we can't put zero into this function if we are going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus, which then, to do so, we would need to apply the bounds as values. So we're going to deal with it in the same way. Zero is a problematic piece because we know it to be a discontinuity. We replace it with a symbol and then take the limit as that value approaches zero. But we're approaching zero from a particular side. In the bounds or the range from zero to two, we're not concerned with values that are below zero. We want to approach zero from the right. 
because that is within the bounds of the integral um, of the original integral. So now that we have isolated that problematic piece, that discontinuity, I proceed with the fundamental theorem of calculus, which is the same process that I have shown before, but we have a limit as a goes to zero from the right once we get to this step where we have used the fundamental theorem of calculus and applied the upper, the lower and upper bounds. But in this case, the upper bound goes in first and then the lower bound. Now it's time to take the limit. The limit as a goes to zero from the right does not affect the negative one half. The one over a is going to use a limit law when you, when you have the expression one over a variable that is being reduced to an infinitely small number because it's going to zero, then the limit will be infinity. One divided into and by an infinitely small amount is going to be infinitely large. And in this case, it's always going to be positive because we're approaching zero from the positive direction. So the smaller the a gets always remains positive. And so this is a positive infinity. And this limit, the infinity overwhelms the negative half. And we have infinity as the answer to this example. That would be the area between the vertical axis and 2. If we can visualize this area, it's the infinite amount of area up the axis, but still to the right of the axis, and 2. And we discovered that in this function, there is not an infinite area between this branch that's approaching the horizontal axis and the horizontal axis. This area is 1. But the area on this side of the curve is infinite, which may be a little bit confusing until we analyze this curve and understand that it's not symmetrical. This curve does not have reflection symmetry over y equals x. So the behavior of the part of the branch that is approaching the horizontal axis is quite different and has a finite limit of the area under it as the part of the curve that is approaching the vertical axis. Infinite area above here, but finite area to the right of here. One more example. If we had the same function that we used in the first example, 1 over x, and our bounds of integration for, were from negative 1 to 2 with respects to x. We have to be careful because the bounds are not discontinuities. We can put negative 1 and we can put 2 into this function. We can put those values into the antiderivative as well. And the bounds aren't infinite. But this is an improper integral because inside of the range of, of the index, or, or from negative 1 to 2, we do have a discontinuity, discontinuity at 0. So this integral has to be separated into 2 so that we can integrate from negative 1 to this problematic value inside of the, the range or the index. and add to it from 0 to the upper bound of the original so that the pieces, the problematic piece at 0, the discontinuity, can be dealt with in the manner that we deal with problematic bounds by introducing a limit. In this case, then, the next step would be to take the limit as a goes to 0 from the left, from negative 1 to that problematic piece that we assigned um, a to. 
and then introduce the limit as another letter, let's use B, goes to zero from the right with uh, of the integral from that problematic piece to the upper bound of the same function one over x. Now I've shown how to go about the process of using the fundamental theorem of calculus with the letters that represent the problematic bound and then applying the limits later. But this example I will not continue, but I wanted to show how to separate the integral in order to deal with discontinuities. Some integrals might have disc more than one discontinuity within the bounds of integration, and so you would need to separate it into as many integrals as you need so that the um, discontinuities then have their own um, index so that you can apply limits to them, whatever is necessary.